Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, I want to say this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. Uh, well, it's time for us to continue on with our look at some uh, previously unheard episodes of the lineup. Uh, we're going to be right in the middle of uh, Wally Mayer's run as Matt Greb. This episode originally aired May 29th of 1951, and it's called The Hiccuping Hamster Hemostatic Case. That was a mouthful, and I said it slowly because I wanted to say it right. Yeah, they got clever with the titles around then. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a listen. Wouldn't you like to sit a little closer, Mr. Phillips? Oh, oh, Lieutenant. Uh, no, thanks. This is fine. I, I'm i a little far-sighted. Oh, I see. I just spoke to your wife. She's with Mrs. Griswold. Oh, uh, I'm glad. They're, they're quite good friends, you know. Griswold kept pretty much to himself, but she's very friendly. Shame she had to be married to a, to a man like that. Well, he was a smart attorney. Too smart. Well, he certainly wasted it working for men like this Rugillo. Just a cheap gambler from what I've read. Oh, don't kid yourself, Mr. Phillips. He's smart, May too. May I have your attention, please? Uh, cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be I've numbered. I've always prided I'll myself on never forgetting a face. Well, let's if hope you, you see what one you'll remember. Well, if he's here, I'll know it. Of course, he was uh, quite a distance away, but as I told you, I'm far When I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of a suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, move up to the end of the stage, right up to the end now. Come on, keep it moving. All right, turn and face front, hands to your sides, look straight ahead. Okay, number one, Marvin Peck, open charge. Where do you live, Marvin? Wilton Hotel, 8th of Maine. What city, Marvin? We don't have an eighth in Maine. You're Biloxi. It's a fine way to treat an out-of-town visitor. Where are you staying here, Marvin? With a friend. I don't know the address. Where do you work, Marvin? Biloxi. I'm on a vacation. You came here to see Max Rugillo, didn't you, Marvin? I don't even know Rugillo. In 1949, you were arrested in a raid on a gambling house operated by Max Rugillo. I don't even know Rugillo. The Biloxi police have informed us you work a crap table in a place owned by Max Rugillo. I told you I don't even know. All right, Marvin, all right. Step back. Number two, Fred Terrell, open charge. Where do you live, Fred? I live on Eastern Avenue, Sergeant. 463 to be exact. And you work for Rigolo, don't you, Fred? Well, I really don't know who I work for, Sergeant. I just do my job and pick up my money every week. Doesn't make much difference what the fellow's name is, see? What were you doing when you were picked up, Fred? Having a friendly drink with a girl. You know, relaxing. How many times have you been arrested, Fred? Well, now, let's see. It's hard to remember just offhand. Four or five, I guess. Of course, we all make mistakes now and then, Sergeant. I remember once when I was a kid, my mother told me, Fred... That's enough, Fred. Whatever you say, Sergeant. Number three, Ben Sampson, open charge. Step out, Benny. Hold your head up. Where do you live? Broadmoor Hotel, 45th Street. Come on, speak up, Benny. 45th Street. Lieutenant, yeah. Where you work? I, I think... Now, just a minute, let me be sure... Where are you working? The River Club. Yes, sir, I'm sure. Yeah, that's you know, the man, Brad. Lieutenant. I, I was so surprised for a minute. I, I guess I didn't really expect Sergeant to see you. Graham. Yes, Lieutenant. Hole number three for interrogation. Say, 
Hey, you mind if I open a window? It's stuffy in here. No, go ahead. You know, I'm surprised at Benny. This isn't his kind of work. No. I wish Phillips had seen the guy with him. He probably did the dirty work. Suppose Regillo did this setup. How do we get to him? I don't know. But I'm going to enjoy trying. Federal boys will send us a large bouquet if we can nail him. When was Griswold supposed to testify? Uh, next week. He could have told that committee enough to crucify Regillo. Well, Regillo must be a bug for realism. One of his $200 suits got blood all over it. Yeah. Well, let's go have a chat with Benny. I got a good feeling about this, Matt. Uh, close the window, will you? It's blowing all the papers. you know how to say anything without cussing? Sorry, I didn't know you were sensitive. We're all sensitive, Benny. Even Regillo's sensitive. He's not going to like you getting yourself identified. Now, why don't you guys knock off? I got nothing to do with Regillo. Now, wasn't it no vacant lot? We know better, Benny. That witness pegged you cold. Who was the guy with you? Look, fella, you're wasting your wind. The guy with the shotgun, Benny. Who was he? Or did you blast Griswold? Maybe you have more nerve than I figured you for. We know Regillo wanted Griswold eliminated, Benny. But right now, you're carrying the load. It's a big load, Benny. We can sew you up real easy. Let's have it, Benny. Who was the guy with you? We'll keep Rugillo off your back, Benny. Come on, don't be a sucker. You guys work pretty good together, don't you? Only I ain't impressed. I've seen it better in movies. This isn't the movies, Benny. Griswold is good and dead. And you're no actor, Benny. Rugillo staged this killing and we know it. Well, yeah? Why don't you leave too, muscle man? Go take a fly and... What's up? Amster Ross just wanted him, says he's got something. Got him in your office. Look, I told you for the last time. One more time. Nah, I I'll drop dead. Yeah? I'll be upstairs. Okay. Uh, what did you say about me, Ben? Now, what's on the hamster's mind? Says he's got something on the Griswold killing. Oh. Is he sober? Yeah. Look, I don't believe it either. <laughs> oh, hi, Lieutenant. Uh, hello, hamster. Oh, you're looking good, Lieutenant. Why, you ain't look so good in years. What's on your mind? Uh, quit drinking, you know. Just weekends. During the week, I don't touch it. I'm glad to hear it. Well, what have you got? I'm pretty busy. You know, it's funny. Since I quit drinking, I, I notice a lot more. Why, I can almost see. I heard about Benny being picked up, and I remembered what I noticed. That never used to happen. Uh, what did you notice, Hans? Well, I was in Louis, not drinking, of course, <laughs> just visiting with the boys. You know, it ain't hard not drinking if you keep talking to uh, Get to it, huh? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, well. Uh, Benny was there having a snort, and there was a guy with him. Remember when I had my own place and you busted four bottles of good whiskey in two chairs arresting a guy named Vincenti? Well, that's the guy that was with Benny. George Vincenti? Yeah, that's him. So anyway, a couple of hours later, I heard Benny had been picked up. And then when I read why you got picked up, well, I figured... Uh, thanks, that... Hamster. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. You see, I figured you'd like to know. Never paid much attention to things when I was drinking. Yeah, Ben. Uh, drag out a package on George Vincenti, will you, Ash? I want it fast. Right, Ben. And put out an APB on him. If anything comes in after six, I'm having dinner at Matt's. I figured it was important. I wouldn't have bothered you, Lieutenant. Yeah, it's very important, Hamster. Thanks I a lot. I figured it was important because this whole deal's pretty hot since Benny got picked up. Max Regilla... Gets talked about a lot. Oh, uh, what about Regillo? Well, it won't bother you any, Lieutenant. <laughs> Regillo couldn't bother you. But from what I heard, he wouldn't like you digging around too much in his attic. Since Benny got picked up, he wouldn't like you thinking he had any part of what happened. Oh, not that Regillo would bother you, Lieutenant. He wouldn't bother you. Oh, that Benny is the most irritating little... Oh, hello, Hamster. Hello, sir. Oh, you're looking fine. Just fine. Uh, you can go now, Hamster, and thanks again. Oh, I'm glad to help, Lieutenant. Don't think you owe me a thing, because you don't. I'm glad to help. <laughs> Unless you wouldn't mind telling your boys to kind of leave me alone on weekends. Uh, sure, sure. Oh, well, thank you, then. <laughs> glad to see you both looking so well. News? Yeah. Benny's playmate was George Vincetti. Remember? Well, that's more like it. Now the shotgun makes sense. I should pick him up tonight. What time do we eat? Oh, about seven. <laughs> we walk out in the middle of dinner again. Molly will have kittens. Yeah. Wouldn't you think she'd get used to it after all these years? No, I guess not. Well, come on, let's go. I sure 
a lot of new houses going up. Oh, yeah. Guy named Olner's building a new development right near us. Mm. There's talk they're going to subdivide the golf course. Huh? This town's sure getting big. Remember when this was just a dirt road? Sure. It wasn't a house for miles. Well, I could have bought ten acres right in there for practice. Matt! Matt! It's the custom for automobile traffic to drive on the left in Japan. Learn this and other distinctive ways of life before visiting or being based in this delightful oriental nation. The Japanese are extremely polite and neat. Therefore, you are expected to take your shoes off before entering any Japanese home, hotel, or temple. Your stay in Japan or any other country will be far more agreeable, and the people will be much more friendly if you take the time to observe their native customs. What's in the papers, Mitchell? Oh, Yanks lost yesterday. Dr. Tully reports Here, second floor death, please. No, no, Dr. Tully, no, second floor death, Slow down, please. Lieutenant. He'll be all right. They've been in there an hour. Fifteen minutes. He'll be all right. You like the races, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yeah, they're fine. I hope you don't like them the way my wife likes them. She don't bet much money on one horse, just a little on all of them. Why don't you sit down and relax? Don't do you no good walking off a lot of shoe leather. Dr. Tully, report to second floor desk, I see him please. come in and go Dr. out Tully, all the second kinds. floor desk, please. I can spot how bad. It's to be kind of a hobby. Sergeant Greb, he's going to be okay. I'll bet you. How long you been on this detail, Mitchell? Seven years. Seven years. I've been sitting here watching him come in. Take my word for it, Lute. Here's a doc. Oh. Uh, how about it? How is he? A thick-headed Irishman? Yeah, he's fine. I accused him of faking just so he could get a rest. <laughs> Is he conscious? No, he just came around. He's got a slight concussion, a lot of bad bruises, but uh, I'll get him a pretty nurse. <laughs> Want to see him? Yeah. He'll have to stay flat in his back for a couple of days. Now, I'll call Molly now. Is that his wife? Yeah, I, I wanted to know first. Well... I got George and Sonny spotted. Where? The apartment house on the north side, 74th Street. Doc, tell Matt I'll be in later. Tell Mitchell to call Molly, will you? Sure. Yeah. All right, let's go, Quinn. Oh, Doc, as long as Matt's okay, uh, better save that pretty nurse. You'll just spoil him. How's Matt? He's all right, Asher. Vincenti's on the third floor, 309. We cleared everybody out of the building. Block staked out. Four men in the back in the alley. Two men at the side entrance. Anybody inside? Two men in the lobby covering the elevator and the stairs. Uh -huh. Want to come along? Sure. Matt's okay, huh? Mm, slight concussion. Yeah, Regillo's playing for keeps. Yeah, but if we get Vincenti in one piece, I'm going to make Regillo pay for a lot of things, including my car. It's next to the last door on the left. Uh, hold it. Yeah, it's Vincenti. Uh, nuts. Wouldn't you know he'd step out and spot us? He knows me. He yeah, knows me, too. Yeah, and he's got a good idea why we're here. Well, no sense being backward about it. Come on, Vincenti, open up. Okay, let's go in. Boys in the alley. Fire escape. Ah, there he 
There he is, halfway down. He busted a window. Asher, go down from here. We'll right. take the stairs. Uh, he's not the... Ben! You okay, Quinn? Oh. Yeah. Now, oh, please, don't! No. Oh, shut I'm up. I'm gonna shoot. Ben. Please! That's yeah, okay. I'm gonna shoot. What took you so long? I'm gonna shoot, huh? How is he? Nervous. And where's Regillo? In his apartment, I got two men staked out. Uh, Asher in yet? No, he's still looking for the gun. Well, let's talk to Vincenti. Why'd you kill Luther Griswold, Vincenti? I, I didn't. Who paid you to do it? Nobody. You didn't do it for nothing? I didn't do it. What'd you do with a shotgun? Ah, oh, look, I don't know what you're talking Luther about. Luther Griswold, Max... Rugillo. I don't work for Gillo. I don't even now, know. Why did you blow up Griswold? I I didn't, I tell you. We've got Benny Sampson. He said you did. I don't know Benny Sampson. You're lying. You did a stretch together. I don't know him. You didn't do nothing, huh? Yeah, yeah, I didn't do nothing. What did you run for? Well, I... Well, I got scared and I didn't think. You nearly got dead for not thinking. Okay, okay. Resisting arrest. Lock me up. Resisting arrest. Assault with intent. Illegal possession. I can think him up all day and make him stick. Okay, but I didn't knock off Griswold. Benny Sampson says you're dead. Ah, oh, Benny Sampson. Benny Sampson. I don't even know the bum. I got shoved off the road tonight. There's a cop in the hospital. Well, uh, the town's full of lousy drivers. With shotguns? I don't know nothing about no shotguns. You just don't know nothing. No, I don't know nothing. The word's out that Regillo wants me dead if I get nosy. Well, that's... That's Regillo's business in, in your nose. You and Benny Sampson staked out on a vacant lot. I don't know no Benny Sampson. You and Sampson. Benny staked out on a vacant lot. I told you, you I don't know You blasted Luther Benny... Griswold and ran back and got in your car. I wasn't in no vacant lot. Benny tripped and a witness spotted him. Benny spilled all over the precinct. I'm getting pretty tired of this. Oh, yeah. You're getting awful brave for a guy who was crawling around begging not to get a face full of bullets. Well, what did you want me to do? Keep shooting. I'd have loved it. I want Max Regillo. Well, then go get him. I want a signed statement that he paid you to kill Griswold. Hey. I thought you said Benny spilled all over. He said you were with him in the lot. He didn't say who paid you for the job. Oh, sure. Where's the car, Vincenti? What car? The car you climbed into after you shot Griswold. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You can work on me all night. Make it all week. We've got the time. <laughs> you Where's the car? I don't know. Where's the shotgun? I don't own one. You get five to one anyway. We'll see. Regillo won't get you off. I'll make this stick. Okay. How much Regillo pay you? He didn't. Two hundred? Five hundred? Good professional job. Right up your alley. How much, Vincenti? An all-day sucker. Well, it's very no, funny, I was only kidding. I was only kidding. Ben? Yeah? You want to see the shotgun? Yeah. Bring it right in. Hello, Vincenti. Found your car. I don't own no car. Garage on 85th Street. Fingerprint boys are on it now. Here's the gun. Mm-hmm. Where'd you find it? Under the back seat. Want me to run it up to ballistics? Yeah. You look awful, Vincenti. You should get more sleep. Okay. Take him downstairs and book him. Right. Let's go. Hey, you'll never make it stick. I'll make it stick so good you'll burn in a month. Come on, move. Hey, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No I... deals now. You're a cinch. Come on. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You, uh, you, uh, want Regillo, don't you? What do you want? A break. A break. I can give him to you if you, if you give me a break. The shotgun. The evidence. You'll get first degree. How can I give you a break? You got weight. You got weight. You can throw it around. Second degree, huh? I'll try I don't want to hang. I said I'd try. Regillo paid me. And Benny Sampson? Yeah. He didn't give you no statement, huh? Well, we lied a little. You'll forgive us, won't you? It figured. Let's get a stenographer and then go over and spoil Mr. Regillo's dinner. Still in there, Ben. Now, who's with him? 
Two men eating with him. That's his car, the sedan. There's a guy in it. Uh, look out. Well, let's show him how careless he can get. Get him fast and don't let him touch that horn. Don't move. Don't touch that horn. I told you to stay away from that horn. Catch him. I got him. All right, drag him out of the way. All right. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Where's that girl? Uh, Is she over there, too? What do you want? What is this, Guthrie? You're under arrest, Regillo. Keep your hands on the table, boys. Look, Guthrie. I'm finishing dinner. I'm too full for jokes. I've got Benny Sampson and George Vincenti. So what? I've got a sworn statement. Accessory before the fact. Before what fact? Murder. I hope it'll be first degree. Now wipe off your fat chin and let's go. Okay. But you're going to be real sorry, Guthrie. Up, boys. Now just walk out quietly. You want me to shake them down? Outside. I don't want to bother the customers. Just shoot them if they get out of line. Move. Okay! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! All right, you... Get over there with the Regillo, and both of you, put your hands behind your head. I'm sorry, Benny slugged me so fast. All right, everybody. Calm down, it's okay. <laughs> okay, Ben? Yeah, get an ambulance for this one. That bum nearly broke my jaw. You yeah, sure paid for it. You made him a dead bum. Just lovely, man. Molly was here this afternoon. Mm -hmm. She doesn't think much of your driving. <laughs> I uh, just left Max Regillo. He's sorry he ever had us run off the road. You got him? With everything. We picked up George Vincenti and his shotgun, and he signed a sweet little statement. Well, <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> oh, good evening, Sergeant. Hello. And you're Lieutenant Guthrie? That's right. Well, you can stay a few more minutes, but the sergeant will have to take a nap. Oh, I'm not sleepy. Oh, you will be. Just drink this. Oh. Come on. <coughs> Ooh. <it's... laughs> That's fine. Now say goodnight to the lieutenant. And if you want anything, just ring. No longer than a few minutes, Lieutenant. How about that, huh? And I told the doc not to... What? <clears throat> Nothing. Uh, man. Yeah? Move over. The lineup. Or before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officer says to The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by Blake Edwards and Dick Quine, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. The Lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. A very solid uh, episode. Uh, 
the staging on this just very well done dramatically. I liked how they were just in the middle of the conversation and they made the shooting so abrupt and, and that I think made it more realistic. I also really appreciate the uh, chemistry between Willie, William Johnstone and Wally Mayer in this program and in this uh, particular run of the lineup. And it was actually a situation, I think, where there was probably more warmth and chemistry between these two uh, than you would see be here between Friday and Romero on Dragnet. And I've occasionally wondered if the way this relationship played on radio didn't influence Jack Webb with his choice, ultimately, of Ben Alexander and the Frank Smith uh, character. Now for some listener comment and feedback. Again, on the previous time uh, show in this time slot, The Man from Homicide, Ada says this is really a hard-boiled detective to the max. And uh, Stephen says, uh, I wanted to email some comments about episode 1546, A Man from Homicide, but I think you really nailed it in, in your on uh, comments on episode 1547, Philip Marlowe. I've decided that I don't really like really hard-boiled detective. My only addition to your comments would be that Pat Novak at least had bizarre similes and the metaphors of... Daco of Jaco Madigan to uh, enliven the show. The man from Homicide had nothing. Well, I wouldn't say go that far. And I overall liked Man from Homicide, though not as much as Philip Marlowe or Barry Craig, Richard Diamond, or Rogue's Gallery. I think even the uh, over ta uh, over the top nature of Lieutenant Dana is kind of a feature and. Uh, it's an interesting uh, show for three weeks, and um, I wasn't aware of any uh, American old-time radio show, at least, that uh, kind of went that direction, which makes it worth uh, hearing. But I've uh, pretty much listened to everything else we're going to play, and nothing, uh, maybe Doc Easter, but there's only one episode of that, um, comes close in that way. All right, well, that will uh, do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with the aforementioned uh, Adventures of Philip Marlowe, and we continue on with the lineup next week. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.